I would like to call the September 28, 2021 meeting of the Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Uh, could we have the roll call, please? Am I on? Oh, good. Beluga. Hugheim. Here. Lewis. Here. Olson. Here. Thorson. Let the record note that there are four members present, there is a quorum, and that uh, Commissioner Beloga is not present. Thank you. Um, our next order of business is approval of the minutes of September 14th, 2021. Are there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of September 14th, 2021? Commissioner Olson uh, um, moves that we approve those minutes. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It has been moved by Commissioner Olson, seconded by Commissioner Thorson, to approve the minutes of September 14th, 2021. May we have the roll call vote, please? Who came? I abstain as I was not at the meeting. Thank you. Lewis? Aye. Olson? Aye. Thorson? Motion passed three to zero with one um, abstention. Thank you. Uh, now, moving on to old business, item 4.1, affordable home ownership development option for 9030 Park Avenue South. Uh, may we have the staff report, please? Madam Chair, Commissioners, um, as was discussed at a prior meeting, we are looking at options or exploring options for a vacant lot that the HRA owns at 9030 Park Avenue South. Um, and we've asked Brenda Lena Welke for, from um, the West Hennepin Affordable Housing Land Trust, otherwise known as Homes Within Reach, to um, kind of explore some options, perhaps doing a twin home. Um, and she's put together some numbers for us that she's gonna share, so Brenda. Hello, thank you for having me again. My name is Brenda Lana Wolke. I am the executive director. I did go back and look at what we could possibly do on that site, and our thought was to do a twin home. Our, given the topography and the site, we thought maybe a split home would work on that site. So it would be each unit would be a three bedroom, two bath with a family room and a living room downstairs, um, and then a two car garage kind of on the front side of it. We kind of looked at the base construction price um, of what those buildings would be and then looked at all of the other um, components that we'd have into it, um, the permitting fees, the whack and sack park dedication, those things, the design with the architecture firms, um, what we'd have to pay out on a sales commission if we needed to put them into onto the MLS to get them sold. Um, we don't always go that route, but sometimes it's nice when we have a brand new product because it brings a lot of people to the program that otherwise might not know that we exist. So we do kind of like to have that contingency in there to be able to pay a commission to a real estate agent. Um, there's also some of the construction fees that we would have associated in holding costs and the interim financing that we'd have to take care of. Um, I had included property taxes, but I'm assuming the property taxes on that are waived as it's a city-owned plot at this moment. So that would kind of bring things down. So at the end of the day, when we, we looked at all of the figures, we were looking at roughly 695,000 to build the two units. So just about 350,000 aside. Those units then, um, the way that we would pay for those would be with a first mortgage on those from our home buyer we'd be looking at probably having um, those units sell at about $190,000 a piece. So that would bring in about 380,000 in revenue. Um, we would be willing to go in for a, a writing a grant in the spring to Minnesota Housing. That's through the super RFP. Through that process, we would ask for um, Minnesota Housing HIB grant funds and then Met Council funds to do that. Um, and then we'd also, in the springtime, uh, ask for additional funding from Hennepin County through home funds to help fund that. It would probably leave us about $60,000 short. Um, and we'd always look for community support for that. So in, 
if there was possibly some TIF financing that would be available that def that you maybe have in a pool. Um, if not, we'd have to look at what is that true value of the land and use that as our leverage piece from the city commitment and then try to increase our, our asks on the other side. So that's pretty much where we're at. Um, I did send over a picture of two homes. We currently have four, two units and four, that's four, I should say there are two home, two buildings four units in our portfolio that are twin homes. One was a project in Minnetonka where the city required the builder to build that for us um, through density requirements. And then we did another project with a uh, nonprofit developer in Brooklyn or in um, New Hope. And those are the two there. Uh, the, the Minnetonka one was a very unique design because of the plot of land we had and it's right up against a wetland. Um, you can see it's a, a one-car garage on this side. The back side has a two-car garage. So we, we built it to fit what was there. Um, it's a two-story on this side and kind of a split on the other side. And then the next one, this was developed and built by a nonprofit that we partnered with. The unit that you're looking at is a two-story with a full basement. Next to it, we had a handicapped accessible unit. Um, where that's one level. And so that's another option that we could look at if that's something the city would like to see is us building something that's got handicapped accessibility. Um, we could do that. When we're doing this, we also are always trying to meet green community standards on our new builds um, and looking at what we can do. Um, there is a possibility if we are successful on our current grant application that we have to increase the ask on this and try to make these passive, which means we virtually would be saving our homeowners a lot of money in their utilities by making them passive. And um, if we were to you know, explore that route, I would look at bringing in um, gimmick and having them as the developer because that's who we're partnering with. And the current project that they're working on for us is a passive twin home in St. Louis Park. So we could bring that model right over here in, on this land. So those are the, the ways that we've looked at this. Uh, thank you very much for um, that information. Are there any questions for Ms. Lana Wolk? Yes, Commissioner Hukim. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just wondering why um, why the twin home and not a single family? Just kind of curious because that whole area is all single family homes. So just kind of. The request was to look at twin homes just because of density, having the ability to, to help more families. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us tonight. Um, Administrator Coleman. Thank you. Um, Brenda, what would be your ask of the HRA? Um, I know you had said um, if you look at a twin home and looking at um, green communities, then there is about a $60,000 gap. What would be the potential gap with a passive design? That would probably increase mm -hmm. to close to 100000 Okay. Um, and so they asked for the HRA to be really if you, if you're willing to partner with us and to donate this land, our mission is to to work with you to have us develop what is in your best interest, what you want. So we'd really look for you to say, okay, this is really what we'd like to see there. Come back with the pricing, and then the next steps move, to move forward would be to have a MOU in place so that we could write the grants because that site control is important, but obviously it's understandable that you don't wanna just turn that over to us unless we can do something with it. So that would be the next steps. Thank you, and just to clarify, in a twin home design through Homes Within Reach, they would both be owner-occupied. They would both be owner-occupied. Um, we don't do a HOA, we do a common party wall agreement for the homeowners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, as that was information only, thank you again for coming tonight.
Thank you very much. Yes. Um, now, moving on to item 4.2, proposed 2022 HRA budget and levy request. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just bringing this back. Uh, we had brought forward the proposed budget and levy request uh, regarding uh, at the last meeting. However, we didn't bring forward the resolution uh, to actually have the HRA board approve the proposed budget um, and levy request. And so um, Hennepin County requires that the attached preliminary levy re resolution be submitted no later than September 30th, which is two days. Um, and so the final budget and levy request will be presented for approval at the HRA's meeting in November. And so I am just looking um, for discussion, questions, and a motion to approve that. All right. Uh, thank you, Administrator Coleman. Um, are there any questions for her? Um, uh, yes. Chair, Chair Lewis, I, I, I looked at my notes from our last meeting, and I, I'm satisfied and ready to, to move forward. Great. Well, then I would ask for a motion to approve the resolution for the 2022 preliminary HRA budget and levy amount of $2,718,683. Is there a second? Olson, uh, Commissioner Olson seconds. Thank you. Uh, motion by <coughs> Commissioner Thorson, second by Commissioner Olson to approve the resolution for the 2022 preliminary HRA budget and levy amount. Uh, may we have the roll call vote, please? Who came? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Olson? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passed four to zero. Thank you. Moving on to item 5.1, public hearing and approval of the 2022 Housing Choice Voucher, Section 8, Annual Plan and Administrative Plan. May we have the staff report, please? Madam Chair, Commissioners, before you tonight is an, uh, an annual item that you see every uh, September. Um, as part of um, the Section 8 program, uh, as we administer it, we are required to submit annually uh, an annual plan for the forthcoming year um, and also an update to our administrative plan. Um, we also have to, this is a public hearing, um, so we also take any public comment. Um, they have, we have advertised for 45 days um, the agency plan and the um, administrative plan for the program, and we have not received any comments. All right. Um, um, I will we'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to be uh, heard this evening? Seeing that there is no one, um, I'll officially close the public hearing. Um, I would now be looking for a motion to approve the 2022 Housing Choice Voucher Annual Plan Certifications in Administrative Plan for submission to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Commissioner Olson uh, makes that motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, motion by Commissioner Olson, second by Commissioner Thorson to approve the 2022 Housing Choice Voucher Annual Plan Certification and Administrative Plan for submission to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. May we have the roll call vote, please? Who came? Aye. Lewis? Aye. Olson? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passed, four to zero. Thank you. Moving on to discussion items, item 6.1, Home Improvement Loan Program Updates. May we have the staff report, please? Thank you. Um, so I am bringing this uh, back for discussion as requested by uh, commissioners um, and provided a comparison of what our current home improvement programs um, are right now, but also um, our statutory authority as an HRA and what we are here to do. And one of the primary things is to serve low and moderate income households. Um, and then I have put into a chart proposed, 
it, none of it has to be this way. So it's for us to have discussion about the proposed changes. Um, I do want to uh, bring forward that there were commissioners that brought forward information and questions and asked for this to come back. And we do have one commissioner absent this evening. Um, so this is here for discussion. We would still need to discuss it and at a future meeting um, have additional discussion and as well as looking at what the changes would be and be voted upon and approved by the HRA board for the program to come back up as this program is still currently paused and not accepting new applications at this time. Uh, yes, Commissioner Thorson. Can I? Thank you. <laughs> I would ask that we table this item until we have a full uh, board to discuss it, um, including any discussion. I know this uh, was an important uh, item I, I, for all I, of us, and I would rather we not discuss it and take it down a path without the full right. board being. Um, yes, Administrator Coleman and I actually talked about that. So, um, And I, I would make that as a motion to t uh, table or continue. <laughs> okay, is there a second? Um, I have a question. I just want for clarification, is it um, to make sure we have a full board? That is my motion. Okay. All right. Um, Commissioner Hukim will not be here next meeting. I will not. So, and you will not be here the meeting after, is that? Next meeting, I will be absent, but Brian Hartman will be here. Brian will be here, but we won't, we'll not still have a... Okay. So so then your motion is not necessarily a full board, but because but the ones that have, have expressed. Um, um, <laughs> interesting question. Uh, I guess that would be up to the, to the other board members. Okay. Um, uh, can I was suggesting the <clears throat> meeting that you won't be here is a meeting after Commissioner Hoopy makes a judgment. It's the same meeting. It's the same meeting. Oh, it's the same meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and that is next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, um, I would suggest we postpone until the following. Okay. I, I, I do have a. Act on Commissioner Hoopy, I assume you. Uh, okay. You nodded your head earlier that you'd like to be here today. Right. Um, I do have a question for Administrator Coleman. Mm -hmm. um, we spoke briefly about timing as to when the, mm -hmm. when the programs would again be a, go live. Yes. How much is this going to the, delay this? Thank you, Chair. So um, if we postpone till the end of October, which would be that meeting, uh, then we would we could have discussion at that time. So from my understanding, the board requested to have discussion and discussion only before voting on it. So that would look like the possibly the first meeting of November before voting on bringing the program back up with any changes. So it would be in November that the program could go live again. All right, okay, so we have a motion on the floor to table the meeting until we have- October, a it would be October 20, what date is that, Myra, 26th or 27th? It's the 26th. The 26th. Until October 26th, is there a second? I still have a, I have one question, if that's okay. I, what, let's, Okay. I was gonna say if we get the motion on the table, then we'll mm -hmm. open it up to discussion. Okay. Or did you wanna make the question first? <laughs> uh, uh, Commissioner Olson will second. All right, so it's been moved by Commissioner Olson, second by, or uh, uh, Thorson, uh, second by Commissioner Olson to table uh, this discussion until October 27th. Um, is there any discussion? <laughs> Commissioner Hukim. Thank you, Chair. Um, my only question is what if, I mean, we could have not a full board at the next, you know, at the October meeting as well, the end of October. And so I don't want us to also keep pushing this out. Mm -hmm. So I think, I guess my clarification would be no matter where we're sitting as a board that we would make this discussion that last meeting in October, I make it clear to all board members that this will be the day of the discussion if you want to be participate in it. Okay. I, I hope that. Um, is there 
discussion from the other commissioners? I would, I realize that we had talked about um, a discussion first and then a vote at the, at the next meeting. And I think it's because there's um, a strong feeling that this is a pretty important program that's very popular with uh, all kinds of residents in the, in the city. Um, it, it certainly would be, I assume, okay if the board, after discussion at the next meeting by a full board, were comfortable and would decide to move forward. There's no reason why we couldn't do that, correct? That is correct. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Thorson. That is correct. I would just need to make sure that we capture the exact changes and updates oh. in the minutes to make sure that we're clear on what you would be voting on. Thank you. And then um, it, it is listed in the agenda uh, today as discussion and motion, um, which indicates to me that, and I realize we're all, we've all been on, every one of us on the same page about, about merely discussing it today. But yeah. I'm wondering, I know that last meeting, I think there was some um, potential for that to have moved forward with a vote if we all felt comfortable. Yeah. And I'm wondering if for, clarif for clarity purposes on the agenda, I look at discuss anything under discussion items as being something we will not be asked to take action on. And, and I look at action items or something as items that we will be asked to act on. Okay. And so I would just like to uh, suggest that um, in future agendas, discussion items are merely discussion items and that if anything that uh, would staff would request a vote on um, would be uh, uh, indicated as such. And um, I think that's also important for the general public if they see discussion items and they uh, mm -hmm. uh, do choose not to join the meeting or join the meeting or whatever, but they their feeling is, okay, I'll get some background on this, but they're not gonna act on it. And if I have any opinion, I will, uh, send that opinion at a later date. So I just think it's, it's, uh, it would be a good clarification to make. Thank you, Commissioner, Ols uh, Commissioner Thorson. You're absolutely correct. That was my mistake in, in typing it. <laughs> um, I did, I did. So yes, not taking that word out caused a lot of confusion. And, and I, yes. didn't, I didn't even think about that because when I discussed the agenda, it was only ever going to be a discussion item. So. It was a clerical error. <laughs> but that was a good point taken, Commissioner Thorson, that, yes, discussion items are just discussion items. So, all right. So now we still have not voted on tabling this item. Um, <coughs> I don't think we've changed it. I think we went to October 27th, correct? 26th. 26th, October thank you. October 26th. Um, so, can we have the roll call vote, please? The motion is to table the discussion until October 26th when a full HRA commission is here. Who came? Uh, uh, Chair Lewis? Yes, Commissioner uh, Olson. I think the way uh, Myra uh, mentioned it, uh, put in that the full commission, I don't think we kept it that way. Did right, we? I think we took out full commission. So a meeting of the full commission. That's that's the oh, that's okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I think we've all spoken. Okay. To leave that all we right. Would like to be here, and I, I, I don't get the sense that this is a hugely time dependent item. Microphone, please. I realize we can't. Your microphone. Good <laughs> we can't just keep putting it off. Right. But I, right. we generally have. Commissioner Thorson, you have to turn your mic on. You have to turn your microphone on. We can't record without. <laughs> all right. Um, Lost my train of thought now. Um, you know, I think that um, the, the intent of the motion was a full board, okay. and I believe most of us are here are interested in uh, participating in this topic. And my understanding is it's not entirely time sensitive. So if it does get pushed out a couple times, I don't think we should do it forever, but we generally have full boards present here. So I believe that uh, that would be appropriate. Um, Chair Lewis? Chair Lewis, I have, uh, we have someone in the, um, in the audience that has a question? I am uh, I'm somebody who's an applicant. My application has been... Yeah, could you come to the microphone, please? Yep. Microphone is 
turn them on. <laughs> I'm Andrew. I'm a, is this on? Yep. All right. Um, I'm an applicant to this program. I've been approved. I think some, somebody was helping me with it. I can't remember whom, but I would argue that it is kind of time sensitive because, you know, depending on what happens with this program is kind of contingent on when I can set up this project to do these kind of remodeling. And I'm sure other people that have been approved for this year are in the same boat. So the reason I came here is to figure out what was going to happen with the program. And now you're pushing it off to some other time and that's fine. I get it. But to uh, Commissioner Hog, Hakeem, 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 Hakeem. Yeah. To her point, I think if there's another commissioner that really wants to talk about it, that maybe they should make it a point to be present at the next one. Um, and so to say that it has to be a full commission for discussion or a full board for discussion might be a little much. But I would argue that it is kind of time sensitive. Right. So that's all I have to say. I appreciate we yep. appreciate your comments. Thank you. Yeah. Chair Lewis, I do have a question for the gentleman. Um, where are you in the process right now? Um, I have submitted my application. I think I've submitted my finance stuff. Um, so like my taxes, my income statements. Um, I have not had a site visit, so I haven't had a project approval yet. Um, so that's kind of, you know, now if we're going to get into the end of October, this is an exterior project not going to be able to do a roof this year and so I don't know how that timing will work out with the new program parameters if part of the project now has to be done in the spring if I'm going to have to redo all my finance stuff and things like that so so just for clarification you were well on your way you were, were you approved then I believe I was approved approved yeah I just okay. haven't had my site visit yet okay and getting bids already right. well or? no so okay. Excuse me. He so his application and his finance was approved as eligibility for the program. Right. He would have a site visit from uh, staff to write up the scope of work. Then he would have to put out for bids and have the bids come back and then have the amounts approved and then work could start. Right. So he was in the very first phase of that application process. Right. But he was financially approved. eligible when we put it on hold yes I didn't it wasn't my understanding that anybody was in that um there are there there are no new applications being accepted there were applications that were submitted with financials and they were they were approved based on the initial eligibility of the program but they hadn't gone out for bid or had a scope of work yet and then there were others that did go out for bid and had the bids already so the contractors were already contacted that work moved forward because those contractors were already contacted and that was fully approved. So he's at the process of, he, when he did, completed his application, he noted the work that needed to be done. And that was work that, that's work that's eligible within the program, but staff has not gone out to the property and been able to write up the scope of work and to view everything. So that, that starts the actual work phase. That has not been done. Okay, thank you, sir. I, um, yes, you know, I, I, I do, I mean, I'm not suggesting there's not an urgency here, but I think, again, this is an important project. Um, it, there are many, many people who will be ineligible um, for these loans if we move forward with the proposal. And so um, I am interested in moving it along. I am, am interested in seeing full board discussion. I did not understand that anybody who was already in the loop at any stage was put on hold. And uh, one question for staff I would have, which is unfortunate, um, but I want to do this right next time. And unfortunately, that it has created a bit of a delay. I'm curious how many people are in the same position. Uh, how many uh, loans were approved or people who had their paperwork in? when we put this on hold. Um, I know we didn't vote on it, mm -hmm. and I missed some of the background because I remember distinctly that meeting where um, I had some technology issues, and so I missed that. I think mm -hmm. I probably, I'm not even sure I got on in time to, to, um, uh, to adjourn, but um, I, I know I missed that, and I, it's always been in the back of my mind I wonder what happened, but we weren't voting on anything, so I didn't have a great concern. Um, I would suggest that in the future for something of this type that to pause a program, and I think I made that comment at the past meeting, to, to, to pause a program of this, um, 
uh, of this importance to the city should have been a board decision anyway. But that's just my thought now, and that's in retrospect. Thank Thank you, you. Commissioner Thorson. To answer your question, there's about 18 to 20 applications that were in varying stages um, of the process that had not gone out for bid yet, but had submitted applications. Um, And lastly, due to our statutory authority and uh, as an HRA and the advisement of our general counsel, that is why the program was paused so abruptly. Uh, It was we were not supposed to be serving up to 100% area median income. That's just one thing we were not supposed to be doing as an HRA. Uh, Chair Lewis. Yes, Commissioner Thorson. So um, the um, entire a number of 18 to 30 or whatever. 18 to 20. 18 to 20 um, would have fallen in the category of those who would not have qualified? No. The ones that were CDBG for sure would have followed, fallen under the 80% AMI. However, the applications that came in under the neighborhood program that would go up to 100% AMI might possibly not be approved, which is why in the proposed changes, one of the things to be able to still serve people over 80% AMI is to request a denial letter from a Minnesota Housing Network lender. Therefore, under our statutory authority, we're showing how we're serving people that have that are not able to be served by other markets. Uh, thank you. And I understand and I, I think I had brought up in past meetings that our program may be a bit generous. Uh, my concern was the kinds of things we allow, like landscaping and so forth. So I think it, it is worthy of discussion. I'm just a little concerned about the process, and I'm concerned that people are have been left hanging that I didn't realize had happened. Uh, but once again, I stand by my interest in uh, full discussion by the full board. All right. So your the motion on the floor stands? I mean, we're not changing the motion on the floor. The motion stands. All right. The motion stands, correct. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion? Yes, Commissioner who came. Thank you, Chair. I um, I have to stand behind my feelings of I think that the motion needs, I personally feel that we need to move this forward. We obviously have people that are waiting. Um, we're talking roofs. We're talking things that are important. And so I cannot support the full board. I support making it clear that we're going to, to have this discussion on a specific date all those that need want to attend need to attend and so that is where i'm standing right now so um, i just want to make that clear right, thank you thank and you. i i'm i am going to say i am with commissioner who came i feel the timeliness of this is very important um we have specified the date and so that will allow people to be here if they can be here um, I also understand Commissioner Thorson's concern about having the full board here, but some of these things we did discuss at the last meeting before we tabled it, so it's not totally new. And um, I think we will need to act on the 26th. For me, I would want to act on the 26th, whether the, hopefully we'd be close to a full board, but if we don't have it, we'll go with the people that are here. Um, And perhaps anyone who couldn't be here could um, either contact me, contact one of the other commissioners, contact Commissioner Coleman with any specific comments if there was something that they felt that they wanted to bring forward and just could not be at that meeting. So I would be open to that to Commissioner Administrator Coleman. Would that be something that if a commissioner had some concerns, I could bring them to you if they could not be at the meeting? Always. Okay. Always. So that would give an option of someone not being able to be at the 26th meeting would still be able to have input into the discussion and would allow us to move forward. So um, we have currently have a motion on the floor of <clears throat> tabling this item until a full board on October 26th. May we have the roll call vote, please? Did we get it? Oh, do we have a second, John? I, I, I was just going to ask. I, if, if I seconded it uh, procedurally to get it into discussion, mm-hmm. but uh, 
if I can withdraw my second, I would like to do that. All right. Okay. All right. Um, Commissioner Thorson, would you feel comfortable? I understand your concern about having the full board. But I'm trying to decide whether to withdraw my motion or amend it. Or amend I it. can count. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would actually amend the motion then to suggest that we discuss it at what we talk about the October 28th meeting. 26. And vote on it at a following meeting unless the board, again, feels comfortable at that meeting. We always have, well, we'd have to list it as such. It would have to go on the agenda as something more than a discussion item. Uh, Chair, I, if it's appropriate for me to interject at this point. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Thorson, I appreciate your, the thoughts that you've expressed and the concerns, and uh, uh, we're in a bit of a mess here on timing. And so uh, I, I would- I'm gonna, I'm just, because I was making a motion. Yeah, uh, okay. Commissioner Olson. Uh, so I would make, um, and I was trying to clarify as I went, I would make a motion that we um, act on this item on the meeting of the 28th. 26th. 26th of October. Of October. Of October. And that, um, uh, you know, the board can always postpone it again to a, a later vote if we haven't sorted out the issues. All right. So you would be saying discussion and action. And action. It would be on an action the item uh, action on the item. agenda. Right. At, uh, so we would still forward. have the discussion, but we would act yeah. on and it. And then if there's still discomfort, we always have the right to. All right. To, uh, uh, I like that. We'll move it so that. Hopefully so on the that is my motion, if it makes sense. It, it did. Myra, did it make sense for you? Yes. All right. And um, uh, do we have a second? Uh, Commissioner Olson seconds. Thank you. So, Commissioner, a motion by Commissioner Thorson, second by Commissioner Olson to table this item. No, to discuss. To dis And take action on this item so, on October 26th. Yes, but I want it's discussion and action. Yeah. That's what I said. Well, I mean, discuss it, and take action. Yeah, that's what she said. It's going to be an item on the agenda. To item take on action. the agenda on the 26th for discussion. The motion is to require action, but I, I think it's clear what we <laughs> intend here. Mission, Administrator Coleman, is, her eyes are starting to cross now. <laughs> no, it's fine. So just to clarify, the motion that is on the table is to table this discussion this evening for this meeting, September 28th, to the meeting of October 26th for discussion and action by the board. Correct? Correct, that's my motion. It's, it is not a discussion only item. It will right. be on the agenda to act on if the board so chooses to act Correct. on it at that Correct. time, if which the is, board is comfortable. Which is where I was trying to get yeah. <laughs> the motion. And it had been seconded by Commissioner Olson. May we have the roll call vote, please? Ol sorry. Hoogheem. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Thorson. Aye. Motion passed four to zero. Thank you. Uh, um, Chair Lewis? Uh, yes, Commissioner Olson. I'm not sure if there's a way for this uh, to be done, but given the fact that we've discussed it quite a bit and there were some issues uh, when we did so, uh, that uh, particularly Commissioner Thorson is bringing up now, uh, if there can be some um, uh, some summarizing, if that's possible, to, to get us into focus quickly based on what we talked about before. Um, if that's possible for uh, you, Administrator, Administrator Coleman, to, to do that, I'm not sure if that's a mission okay. impossible or not, but... All right. I think uh, if we can distill the discussion we had before so we're not starting from scratch. Okay. Oh, so, <clears throat> Chair, um, just to answer your question, Commissioner Olson, um, maybe the format is a little off, but what is provided um, as an attachment for, for viewing and um, review is the current program and it's broken down loan limit, interest rate, loan term, income limits, equity limit, asset limit, equity match, exclusions, value limit, application. Those are the items that have proposed changes. And so that is the summary. So the chart at the top is what the programs currently offer and do. And then there is statutory language that is specific to the HRA's creation. And then the chart at the bottom under proposed 
is those ch- are those changes that are being proposed to those items. So there are no other summary items, but if you would like me to change the format. No, I think that's fine. I appreciate okay. you pointing that out. Okay. Because um, we got uh, that information at our, our last meeting, and I think uh, we chew it into it a little bit, and it'll be helpful for us to really okay. focus. This was on. also in our packet for today. Yeah, I understand. So. Commissioner Lewis? Yes. I have a question for, for staff. Is, is there any way, um, given that it was an administrative decision and not something approved by the board, to uh, pause the program uh, over some valid concerns. I'm wondering if there's any way for the uh, administrator to um, uh, work with the 18 to 20 applicants and allow them to proceed with their loans uh, as long as they are at uh, 80%. I mean, if, if I... Again, I'm of the opinion that should have come to the board in the first place, and we shouldn't be in this position right now. But I'm wondering if it really requires our action on the future changes in order to allow the current applicants at different stages to proceed under the old rules that we had approved as a board past years. Because it, is, it was an administrative decision. Or if we can add to the next agenda, action by the board to allow those loans to proceed regardless of what we vote on um, for the future program. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question before we go forward. It's my understanding that this was placed on hold for some legal reasons, for some statutory reasons. And so to go forward with rules that are not acceptable legally by state statute. I don't know as a board if we, can we just vote to Chair, say we will so follow Chair the Lewis, I, I assume that there are some that under the statutory limitations we have, uh, obligations, there are some that may not be able to continue because they were inappropriate in the first place. But it sounds like there may be uh, a subset, I don't know how large, that um, are not affected by that uh, uh, issue and perhaps should proceed. I believe that's almost a contract we have with them in the sense that we advertised a program, we advertised guidelines, people applied, people made decisions about their homes and their investment in their homes and proceeded. Uh, beyond just thinking about these are accepted applications. And uh, aside from the statutory issues, I'm wondering if we can allow by administrative or by board decision the loans that aren't uh, in conflict with the statutes that we allow them to proceed under the old program guidelines that they applied and under I, I certainly and proceeded under. My Thank you. My question would be, from our legal, from our so, legal person, our, our, our attorney. I, I think that would fall into her category. I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I think that, that is a good idea. I would turn it over to the administrator, though, to say, would our counsel approve of us doing that? So I will say I would have to ask legal counsel, which would require them to review all the applications. I have not reviewed the application, so I cannot tell you if there are people that would not necessarily qualify. Um, one, if they're one, the program was posted the way it is. So they submitted the application under that program so that I think it would be very hard to pick and choose and say, well, we're possibly going to implement some proposed changes and now we're going to not approve your application. That's number one. Um, Number two, it's more than just income that um, it's also gets into the type of property, the property value and possibly the work being done. And then three, the 18 to 20 applications that are in at different stages, this program is also paused for the help loan. 
And there are at least four properties that are cited with environmental health that could use the HELP loan. That is an emergency situation, and this is also paused. So what I'm saying is if we start to say, okay, we will move forward with the ones in queue, mind you, I understand they were in queue, but then how do we tell the other ones no that are emergency situations that are waiting? Lastly, we are not the only available product. There is Center for Environment and Energy. There is Hennepin County. There is Minnesota Housing. And some of those are actually grants, whereas we are alone. Chair Lewis, I understand all the um, issues that went into the changes we are proposing for the future program. I'm talking about the program that we had in place that this board approved, that people applied for, and uh, some segment is in limbo. I'm suggesting that we make that we allow people to proceed with those loans unless it's in violation of st of the statute you're talking about. I'm not talking about whether or not they meet our future um, guidelines that we may, as a board, choose to set in place. I'm just saying allow the loans that have been approved, that have been submitted, that meet the guidelines and aren't in conflict with statute. Let them proceed. Uh, as if this administrative decision had not been made. If we have an issue that is there's a conflict with statutory guidelines, then that's how we tell the people we say no to. So I'm saying we should be able to continue with these emergency situations where there are citations. We should be able to continue with the applicants who were approved and who are in various stages of the process as long as it doesn't violate the statutes that brought this up in the first place, period. Then we discuss future guidelines, income limitations, all those kinds of things as a board and make a decision um, on those changes. That's my suggestion. So I can reach out to legal all right. um, under, the, under this proposal, under the information brought forward, Anybody over 80% AMI, our legal is going to advise that they do not move forward. Okay. All right. And I'm uh, just for clarification, because that is a violation of statute. Yes. Absolutely. I understand that. Thank you. Okay. And I'm comfortable with that. My biggest concern was the legality of what we were doing. I appreciate you looking into this for Commissioner so, Carson, because I think that was a good point. One last thing. Um, Anybody over 80% AMI legal would advise that they do not move forward. And one of the proposed changes is to get a denial letter from a Minnesota housing network lender. That way we would be able to serve people 81 to 100%. So we run at this point, from what I'm understanding, we run the risk of denying people between 81 and 100% AMI and possibly when we bring the program back up, they would be eligible at that point. Okay. Okay. I would just ask staff to look at how we can get around this. I view these applicants that have been submitted under the guidelines of the program originally as valid applicants under the program we had, barring any uh, uh, statutory issues. I think that's a valid point. Thank you, Commissioner Thorson. Um, yes. Administrator Coleman. Chair Lewis, we, yes, I, I don't know if it's appropriate. Oh, we have yes. a question in the audience. What statute are you referring to? Thank you. The question was what statute am I referring to? It is statute chapter 469, and that is the chapter Minnesota statutes under which the authority is organized and existing. It's called the Housing Authority Act, and it's chapter 469.001 to 469.047. And it, we also have uh, in the previous items, we have a resolution that created the HRA by the city of Bloomington um, that was passed in 1971. All right. Thank you all very much. I really oh, appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for coming and speaking this evening. Yes, yeah. We appreciate the input. Thank, thank you. Your have a great night. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and... You now, Commissioner Thorson now has, I agree with what Commissioner Thorson said, as long as we stay within statutory guidelines, I think that's a really valid point that he had. Do we have two actions kind of on the table right now? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So we did we we had tabled the item, correct? The item's been tabled, and staff has uh, a staff direction has been submitted for staff to look into and discuss with legal counsel around the applications, and I don't have the exact number, which is why I'm not saying it again, around the applications that are in queue for both the CDBG and the neighborhood programs at varying stages to see about moving forward with those applications within our authority granted by statute. All right. And will that be coming forward? Would that be at our meeting of the 26th of October? I can compile the information. I'm probably would have the information before that meeting that would be good. because we would need to, without making people's information public, at least be able to say how many applications there are, how many uh, would qualify in terms of the income, because that's really where they're at in terms of just the paperwork. It's nobody that's gone out for bid yet. Okay. Anybody, the other people that, that went out for bid, they were allowed to move forward. Um, so it's a matter of people being able to review their eligibility again based on the income and then allow them to contact contractors to go out for bid in order to start the work. All right. Chair Lewis, I, I would yes. be comfortable if it could be an administrative decision to allow, uh, provided we get legal guidance that allows us. Uh, to to make the decision as to which applicants can move forward uh, 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 and um, communicate with those that cannot due to statutory reasons and what their options might be. Um, I'm comfortable with that being a, a, a staff decision prior to the board, uh, any future board meeting. That's a and I would just also suggestion. like to add that um, I'm generally quite supportive of, of making changes to the program so we are best serving um, uh, those in uh, who most need the program. And I think it's something I brought up in past meetings when we've talked about it. I've always felt a little bit like when uh, we as a board uh, increased income and so on, that there's a little part of me that, that um, you know, has been nagging me about that. So um, I'm generally, I know we had some big issues that came up, but I, I'm pretty confident we're going to uh, be able to revise the program uh, uh, in a, largely along staff recommendations. And I think that um, it is appropriate for us to make sure that our limited budget is, um, uh, is used to p support our mission. So I'm, um, I'm not opposed to the changes. I, th I think many of those changes were quite good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thorson. Um, I am going to move on to our last item because it is the commissioner question and answer period. So if any of the other commissioners have anything that they would like to add um, this evening, the appropriate time. Okay. Well, I think we've given you a lot to do. Uh, yes, uh, Administrator I, Coleman. Yes, so I do have a few things to add. Um, one, I want to remind that tomorrow uh, the ULI panel is virtual. We had previously had discussion about being in person, and, and it has been shifted to completely virtual. And so those links should have been provided. Uh, let me know if you don't have it. We will resend the information so you don't have to show up anywhere. It's 100% virtual, but please participate if you're able to. And then um, secondly, there is a uh, discussion around with the planning commission to have a joint planning and HRA meeting. This would be Wednesday, October 27th. <laughs> so um, uh, it's actually Thursday the 28th. Is it Thursday the 28th? Yep, that's the regular meeting. Okay, so Sorry. Thursday the 28th. I'll have to, I'll double check that. Just when I talked with planning staff, they kept saying that Wednesday. I so just, maybe they had the date wrong. I just checked with Julie okay. before the meeting. Thank you, Myra. Appreciate you. Okay, so Thursday the 28th. So it's that same week, and it is in person. Um, but it would be a joint meeting, and I can bring the information back. I just wanted to make you aware of it as soon as possible uh, because it's in discussion. It's not something that we've solidified where you have agreed and said, yes, we'll have a joint meeting. But um, the topics already going forward at the planning commission, that meeting, is around single family and two family zoning, as well as uh, discussions around ADUs. And so the conversation from planning staff was, oh, we could bring that to the HRA. And I said, well, it'd be nice if we could just 
all gather so we can hear what each other have to say and participate that way. Um, so next meeting will be an agenda item to see if you would like to do that joint meeting at that time. Any any other any other comments from anyone on the board? Hearing none, um, do I hear a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Thorson. So moved, Thorson. <laughs> Commissioner Hukim seconds. Right. It has been moved by Commissioner Thorson, second by Commissioner Hukim to adjourn the meeting. May we have the roll call vote, please? Hukim. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Olson. Aye. Thorson. Aye. Motion passed. It is 655.